Brad gets Kim Hachi and both made on Heaven. Three, no. 
number seven. Players from San Diego, California. Today we are here as Soul Medusa and Erica Frey from Soul Eater. Japan and all. Yeah, Japan 
that ain't that great. Um, Y'all need to get yourself together. I mean, they, they might got the, uh, the Final Fantasies. I mean, we got bass fishing. They got, they got swords and junk. Well, in America, you can own a gun. You can use a gun. And hell, you can just blow someone away with a sword. Shoot. You watch all these daggone cartoons? You got all the ladies going out there? Right there. Top heavy torsos and whatnot. They don't even look like they're right. These ladies don't even look like they could exist. They're not even anatomically correct. Why, if there's one of them ladies walking around, I bet she just they all snap in too. Shoot. I just don't understand, y'all. Y'all need to, to take some time to just dag on look at yourselves and be proud to be Americans, all right?
electric heels all made the trip to Seattle. Sing to the bottom of the sea. Charles, before he went to hell, he called out to his room. It's over. Samurais and problems. I was born in Texas. 
took me three years to get rid of this damn man. I'm in this accent. Moved up north, the damn Yankees. I mean, northerners told me I had a funny accent. So I changed my accent. I was from Thomas, from East Glasgow, Scotland. But for some reason, people do not believe me. I have to wear my whole, you know, thing again. The, the, the kilt moment here. My friends have been making. That's always been fun, is that? Those more. Yeah. Oh, wait. Um, sir, could you grab that little note? There's, there's a note on the uh, stand. It's a little handwritten thing. Not the good head. Yeah, that one. That'll work. Yeah, that's the one. I, I have to write that down. Yeah, that's the one. I, that's the one I need. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for sharing, Sarah, for doing that. <laughs> because of piratey things, I have to announce this. Leah, Miana, uh, Sarah, Miana, and uh, Shannon Gilstra bought me for 83 gold pieces at the rum party last night. <laughs> And apparently, I lost the game. <laughs> it's over! It's over! It's over! The game is over? Why did it double? What? It doubles? Yeah! I don't want to know about this. Do I believe a blue shirt from Star Trek? No, anyways. <laughs> so I, I live this really weird and interesting life. I, I just, you know, I'm an actor. How many of you have seen Heroes, by any chance? Anyone remember? First season, second episode, Hiro Nakamura teleports himself to New York, they find the dead artist there, they can't understand a word they say, and they have to bring in the Japanese translating police detective. <laughs> That's, yeah. That's me. <laughs> There's a problem with that, as most of my friends you will find in middle raise their hands. I don't speak Japanese. <laughs> I don't speak Japanese. When I spoke Japanese with my southern accent, I'd go to the family in Japan going, Kaonichiwa, I'll talk to you at the Dao Tomomatsu desu, Yankee, y'all. <laughs> and when I woke up two hours later, <laughs> with the reverse Gucci label on my forehead because my mother's purse came out from five miles out. <laughs> and the Dao is so funny, you did the funny southern accent, your mother's purse came out out in the corner, under the table, smacked you right in the middle of the forehead, you it. You know, the legends of the, the mother's missile-guided purse are true. <laughs> Only made worse because the Japanese perfected the technology to make it more accurate. <laughs> it never hit you in the same place twice. So I had this double G going all over my face for that entire weekend I was in Japan. Anyway, uh, I also lead a really interesting, you keep blowing me up on heroes. You know, it's like, previous on heroes, boom. Previous on heroes, boom. And it's like, this is not helping our family in Nagasaki. Okay, stop doing that. Proving, you know, uh, reincarnation in action. So, uh, and I come, you know, dad's a scientist, okay, mom's a teacher, what else is new? Uh, but here's the really fun thing, my uncle, this is, this is the funny part. All right, for those of you who've heard this story before, this is not the story you've heard of. <laughs> All these jokes are funny. Jokes are funny. Kadao has a great face for radio. <laughs> DJ in Chicago, I used to be, my dad's at 105.5, 850 AM down. Real nice, I'm all around, sometimes I'm Bob Stops, and call me live in America, and here's the latest from Elton John. <laughs> the problem was, we had a sister station, which is country, so every once in a while I'm going, yeah, this is the latest from Garth Brooks, and you know, this is Mike Hansen. And I have to go by Mike Hansen, because the guys on the radio station said they never believe a guy named Tadal Lumomazzo speaks with a southern accent. This is a problem, because I had to make personal appearances in the Midwest. <laughs> Mike Hansen from WXET. <laughs> Where is he? Hi there. <laughs> You're not from around here, are you? <laughs> so anyway, my uncle owns a restaurant back in Sacramento. And uh, how many how many like sushi? Oh, maybe I shouldn't tell this story. Oh, did that. Uh, so there's this thing about uh, uh, when you're at a restaurant, and since he's near the capital, there's lots of these obento boxes. You guys know what an obento box is? And, and there's lunches and all that. So like, a lot of it's sushi, and then we're near the capital. But you have to start early to get all the orders in. So as you start making it like 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock or 9 o'clock, then when the 10 o'clock runs and you just start giving them all this and that. And there's a trick to it. It's not a major trick, but it's everyone in the kitchen starts slicing sushi like you wouldn't believe. We all have our own spots where you go slice, but then you slice the sushi and you flip it over into a little dish or a long dish, whatever, and you split, cut, flip, cut, flip, cut, flip, and then someone comes in, switches out the plates, takes it to the sushi uh, man, and that would be like my uncle. Yo, da -da, stop messing with the knife. No more magic tricks. Stop scanning everyone with hot dogs. Anyway, uh, and so I'm going to slice, but you know, I'm an actor. 
something that's before 2 o'clock in the afternoon is like, oh, dark 30 for me. And so when my uncle asked me over at like, oh, 9 o'clock in the morning, 10 o'clock in the morning, small space near the door. Now, one of the guys had to leave early. I said, Tadao, can I switch places? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. And I switched places with him. Cut, 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 cut. And it's very rhythmical. It's almost like hypnotizing. And it's kind of like this. And then as we're going for like half an hour, everyone's going, what's that? I don't know, because everyone's cutting sushi. It's raw fish. There shouldn't be any like, but something's burning. What do you mean something's burning? Something can't be burning. We're not doing it. All of a sudden, everyone's going, Tadao! I go, what? I realize I've been cutting a half a tuna. I miss the dish, and I hit the teriyaki grill, which had been warming up for the last week. <laughs> it was burning, really. You know, the smoke, the plume, everyone swears I was trying to say. I convinced my uncle for a whole minute that it was black and Cajun sushi. <laughs> my aunt didn't believe it for one second. <laughs> That's a... Yeah, well, I always could have used the toaster, yeah, but then there would be electric sushi. Oh, pop-up sushi, a little, like, you know, pop tart Ooh, Pop-Tart sushi! Oh, maybe with wasabi frosting. Ooh. I don't know about that. It's crispy, it's crunchy, it's raw. Wait, why is this made of rice? Uh, and I may have to pack that one. Who knows? About two weeks later, um, the same guy had to leave me on kids' dental appointment, his doctor's anchor. But this time, the family was smart. They put me anywhere near the teriyaki grill over there. They put me in the middle of the room with that real, you know, the legendary big chopping block you see in the middle of the room of every you know, cooking show you have to walk, walk, walk. And, you know, so they said, there's no way to doubt to get in any trouble with there. How many of you believe this? Oh, you guys, I don't know. No, just kidding. Uh, so here I am, now like I said, it's just cut, flip, cut, flip, cut, flip. And when they come in, the sushi orders come in fast and furious, so then we have to move the sushi, and someone has to hot wash it sometimes. So you have to, you know, hot wash the whole dish to bring it in, it's a little wet sometimes. It is like crazy. And like I said, it's like da-dum, 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 da dum And I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm not gonna mess up. Like I would, and all of a sudden I hear the tump, tump, tump. I'm like, why am I the only why is everyone staring boom? Thump. To now I go, what? And I look, boom. I've been cutting again another half tuna. There was nothing in this long dish. The dish was wet. It flipped into one end, slipped it, shot out the other way, and landed in the tempura fryer in the corner. I don't know what's crazier, a whole room full of Japanese people yelling frying fish or flying fish. I turned to them and I said, tell me someone took a picture or videotaped this. All 12 heads went. <laughs> that could have been our ticket in America's Funniest People. Can you hang with us? I don't work in my uncle's restaurant anymore. <laughs> Go figure. Because they're a little worried what I'm actually going to do with, like, you know, the real cooked food, you know? It's like, ta-da, look, it's flying cutlasses! <laughs> and the problem is, you know, my, my aunt doesn't really like me when I bring in a samurai sword to try to cut the fish. It gets really ugly. <laughs> um, how, many, how many people help people out? How many people are the people that you get called on for emergencies, craziness, who has that reliable Japanese color? Okay. Oh! You own Toyotas, don't you? No, just kidding. Uh, I can say that. Um, so I, I keep getting phone calls from everyone, because I, I used to do a little medical thing. I used to be able to, I've got the emergency kit from Heck in my trunk, you know. I can make curry in five minutes. Well, I'll get eight if I decide not to use the kerosene and decide to go with the car engine. But anyway, so I, my top favorite phone calls on the cell phone, how many of you, if you've seen, if you've heard this type of thing, like, uh, the first one is Tadao. Help, I've stuck my toe in the sink faucet. <laughs> what? <laughs> Joanna, you, you, you've got, yes, my toe is stuck in the sink faucet. <laughs> Can you come and help me? Why don't you call your husband who's part of the fire department? No, I don't want them to know about this. <laughs> I'm not a paramedic, 
gonna go, just come over and help me. I'm like, all right, all right, all right, all right. So, so I go into the birds, and I go in, and then I, I, I you know, pound on the door, and it says, you have to break it. So okay, I break down the door, and I, and I go running up the stairs, and the door to the bathroom is locked. And I said, Joey, are you in there? I said, yeah, I'm going to break the door. What? Break down the door. Okay, fine. And I go busting down the door to a naked blonde. <laughs> Her foot is in like this. The towels are just out of reach. She had one of those new cordless phones, so she had it positioned a little like, by the way, if there are any kids in the audience, cover their ears. I'm sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> hi, guys. I'm dead. Anyway, so she's doing this whole thing, and the antenna's just covered. Well, you get the idea. So anyway, I'm Japanese. <laughs> What can attract a Japanese guy faster than saying sushi? A blonde. <laughs> and there's a naked blonde in front of me. Thank you, Buddha. <laughs> Wait, this is my husband, this is my friend's wife. This is not gonna work. And I'm just, uh, how did, before I can say me, how did you, did we just get me out of this? Grab her towel and, and got her foot out of yeah. Now, there were no, shaving implements, there was no toenail colorations, the water was... I still don't know what to this day has ever happened, and she will never tell me. Years later, her husband came and said, Hey, uh, no. Said, yeah. Well, uh, you remember Joanna, she got her toes stuck in the same closet? Said, yeah. she ever tell you what happened? No. <laughs> Why didn't you ask her on a date? I said, you were married to her at the time. Oh, my. Thank you. <laughs> now, that's just one of the least phone calls. The other one is, Tadao, help, I'm stuck in a snowdrift. I'm in Burbank, California. I look out on this bright, sunny day that's 95 degrees in February. Here. And I'm going, okay, are you in the mountains? Where are you? I'm stuck in a snowdrift, it's coming. Oh, where are you stuck in a snowdrift? Washington. DC or state? DC. And you're calling me in California? Are you still working for the State Department? Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> Why don't you call AAA? Because it only works in California, the AAA is Okay, calm down. How are you doing? I've got three cappuccinos. You're fine, what am I worried about? <laughs> are they double frappe latte? No, they screwed up from the order. Like, oh God, now it's an emergency. <laughs> So eventually, I, I, I put out the call to all my friends on the other side of the coast, in Boston, New York, whatever. Guys, do me a favor. There's a friend of mine. She's stuck in her car. She's okay, although she's only got two cappuccinos left. She's from California, and I got a couple phone calls going, oh my god, she's dead. You know, uh, she'll run out of caffeine before we can get to her. Yeah. Can you just find a AAA number that she can use out there? Well, the odd thing was is that no one could seem to find a number. So. I have a couple friends who are in this situation. I've helped them out before, and so my friend, now think about this, from Boston, got his pal Antonio, who has a tow truck. From Boston, made it all the way down in three hours to Washington, D.C., found her off the Beltway, and got her out. Now think about it, Boston to Washington in a tow truck. Three hours. I swear his last name should be Andretti. <laughs> Or Doc Brown, I don't know. He should go and oh my god, Barney, what did you do? Don't touch that! <laughs> and all the way down, they're talking about, oh my god, all the crazy, yeah, you should see the fire truck at the pole. Yeah, I can't believe I'm doing the Tadao Kumamatsu rescue. And Tony looked at my friend and said, wait, you know Tadao? <laughs> it happens occasionally, is it, you know Tadao? Oh my god, and they went down, they rescued her, they brought her four cappuccinos, she was okay for <laughs> And they realize four cappuccinos is not enough for a California vacation. So, and the other one is, all right, I'm gonna jump the other one. Should I jump the other one? I should, no, I should do the other one. Here's the other one, which is, Tadao, I'm locked out of my car. Where are you, Florida? <laughs> Have you ever seen one of those nice Land Rovers? You know, the really fancy looking one that's got the little remotes and all that. It's got the butt warmer, I mean seat warmer. <laughs> I forgot there were kids in the room again. Uh, the tushy warmer. Yeah, there we go, the toaster. And, and tomorrow, she's on the road. Now, fi she finally told me that a nice Florida highway patrol officer came up and said, man, are you all right? I can't get into my car. The you won't work. The lights, I think I can't get in the car. Well, you know, we're just down the street from a 7-Eleven. Yeah, but it's Okay, well, why don't we just go and switch it up? But I can't get into the car. 
okay, um, if I get you in the car, will you be able to go down to the assembly level and get your batteries? And, yeah, I guess so. So he takes the whole keychain out of her hand, holds the, hold the remote, flips over to the key, and puts it into the lock. <laughs> she has been told that the way you get into the car is by the remote control. No one bothered to remind her that you can use the key to get into the car. I hate to admit this, she's a blonde. <laughs> I'm sorry to anyone who's blonde. I'm really sorry, but it's true. She's a blonde. I can't get it. The, okay. the Florida State officer is still telling me about this. Yes, I've met him. He's funny. Uh, the number one phone call, or the number one and two phone calls I get. To now, help! My car's on fire. Are you in the car? No. Did you call 911? No, I decided to call you first. Wait, wait, stop. What? No, I wasn't going to say names. I wasn't. Ladies and gentlemen, I wanted him to come and videotape it. <laughs> I, I have no control over it. I knew it was an engine fire. There's nothing you can do. If you don't have the right chemicals, and if I had somebody else go into the house and call 911 about a burning car, but I was hoping he'd get there first with his video camera. <laughs> That's a legitimate reason. Now, how many of you believe all my stories? <laughs> Thank you. I was going to say before someone spilled the beans that I know six people who have done this to me. I wasn't going to mention uh, his name. <laughs> I love you too, Gracie. Uh, well, no, actually, I got there after, but discovered that a, a was it the Toyota? No, it was the. Uh, yeah, I know that was the. This wheel well can hold like 40 gallons of fluid. Because once we open it up. <laughs> but meanwhile, my other friends who have called about this said, you know, now I, you know, my car's on fire. And I actually turn on the news to find them with a helicopter circling them off the freeway. <laughs> Which is really scary because you see just on the access road behind it the fire truck heading this way, but it can't make it because everyone stopped trying to call 911 about her car. Which is why she called me about it in the first place. However, here it are. So has anyone ever had that? Help my cars. Oh, oh, welcome to the club. Welcome to the club. Here's the really bad one. I get a phone call from a friend of mine going, To now, my house is on fire. <laughs> Are you in the house? No, no, actually, I just made it out of What about the rest of it? We're okay. Oh, wait, you didn't think you wanted me to you have you to come over and put out the fire in the house, did you? Yeah! <laughs> oh, that's right, the cars are on fire. <laughs> I'm never going to trust cartoonists again. <laughs> Especially ones who create Marvel comics. But anyway, that's a different story. Uh, I just know, it's, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Yeah. So now you know what kind of really weird life I have. Does anyone else have this? Is it just me? No, you have the weird life. Yeah. But you're not Japanese. Wait, you're not Japanese. Okay, you're Japanese. I can understand, huh? <laughs> oh, okay, never mind. No worries on that one. Like, you're half Asian. Ah, uh, yeah. See, I'm part Japanese and part Japanese. I don't know what you're doing. No, it scares me. The, uh, you know, oh, that was the funny thing. I'd go, go around. Um, anyone seen that really weird movie with Ben Affleck, I think it is, and Sandra Bullock called Pearl Harbor? Pearl Harbor, the American version of the, of the Greater Pacific War. <clears throat> Yeah, I brought it. And I went and... Huh? It was Kate Beckinsale, not Sandra Bullock. Oh, it was Kate Beckinsale. I said correctly. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, this hey, Pearl Harbor. Yeah. I get called and to audition for Pearl Harbor. Now, I get there and I find a room full of people who are not Japanese. There's a Korean guy in front of me who looks like the Korean version of Mr. Clean. <laughs> Earring in the exact same place, same time, white t-shirt, bulging muscles, and he is supposed to be playing a Japanese radio officer on the flagship, the Itagi. <laughs> I'm running for the same thing, and there's one other Japanese guy, and I was like, hey, to now! I said, hi! Oh, fuck, I don't know who he is. Uh, I don't remember who looks like Mr. Clean, you know? Now, I learned all the lines in Japanese. Like I said, I don't speak Japanese. I had to call my two walking dictionaries, mom and dad. 
well, they're free and they're off, you know, off 24 hours a day and they know how desperate I can be. Like, you know that uh, you should have uh, more Japanese instead of that French stuff. It's like, yeah, thanks, Dad. Okay. Um, yes, my dad does sound like that. Don't tell him. Oh, shoot, it's going to be on the internet. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so, what, my dad? Oh, the internet. You know, well, the good thing is dad doesn't really know the internet, even though he's a root scientist, you know, scientist. He knows pi to the 23rd number after the decimal point, but still doesn't remember when he got married, when he came to the United States, and the date of mom's birthday. Oh. Needless to say, dad gets into the doghouse quite a bit, so. I'll tell you a story about that in a minute. But anyway, so I go and audition for Pearl Harbor. Now I just finished working this little odd TV show called Jag, where they have this military thing and this yeah. saloon. Jag, yeah, you're... Check it on Hulu for the rest of you guys, okay? No, it's cool. But it's a military show, and I, I go in, and I learn how to salute. Now the first problem is, is how many understand Japanese military language, per se? Sort of, sort of. Okay, so I said, the line for Dad, the line is, um, Admiral, the uh, attack on Pearl Harbor is a success. Shall we continue? Boy, that was a lot. And to which he said, oh, you are going to speak to uh, Yamamoto, the Admiral on the flagship, so you have to call him this. Yeah. Can I call him Skipper? No, no, you must call him this. Dad, I'm not going to say that. I said, no, no, but that is a military term. You go, you know, da, da, da. no, Dad, Mom is listening. She's a professional translator. And also, Mom and Dad are speaking very rapidly over the phone in front of me in Japanese, so I don't understand. It's like, oh, so that's what the problem is. So the original way I was supposed to, if I followed Dad, was going, kaka. <laughs> if you think I'm going to say in front of a whole bunch of Hollywood types, kaka, the attack on Pearl Harbor is an exception. No. True as it is, I'm not going to call the Admiral a piece of... Oh, wait, that's in English! Oh, never mind. So, so I learned the lines in Japanese. I charge in. I'm wearing the, the nice brown outfit, you know, I got from Jag, you know, it's a little thing from the And I, there's the producer, director, casting, there's like 12 people, a couple people from the studios and all that. And I come in, I snap to, and I salute. And then all of a sudden, one of the voices said, I'm sorry, you're not Japanese enough for the role, but we'll let you read for it anyway. Uh, and I said, I'm doing it. Okay. Um, Tadao Tomomatsu. <laughs> not Mike Higashi. Not Alexander Ito. Both parents from Tokyo. First generation Japanese. The right line is, what gave it away that I wasn't Japanese enough for the room? <laughs> I, Admiral, the attack on Pearl Harbor is a success. Shall we continue with that line? <laughs> I did that. I had the satisfaction of 12 jaws hitting the floor of the camera. Oh. Yeah. However, I'm still sung in song and filking and, and other things. Hi! Oh, newsflash! Oh, okay, so like, let me finish this real quick. Is that I still have lots of people going, you're not Japanese enough for Pearl Harbor. <laughs> Never mind. So ladies and gentlemen, I believe by the, the frantic rounding of everyone, I think the judges have been unsequestered. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, am I reading it or who's reading it? Judges are on the way. The judges are on the way. Uh, Manama. <laughs> Manama. <laughs> Manama. <laughs> Manama.
Whoever, whoever was in the masquerade, could you take a look around and see if we're missing anyone? Are we missing any masqueraders? Are we missing any cosplayers? No. That's a wrong question. Anyone who participated in the masquerade, are we all here? No. If you're not here, say something now. Wait. Hello, everyone. I'm here to announce the workmanship awards. Okay, and finally we have best craftsmanship in the novice division. 
goes to entry number two, Lane. It's actually that cardboard and hot glue and lots of paper clay and lots of sanding and and like it's like the sheath and the shield and the sword and, and actually all the little lacing detail, she made all the lacing. Craftsmanship gets a sign picture. Um, the best in novice craftsmanship is getting a signed uh, picture by our artist guest of honor. <laughs> okay, next we have best craftsmanship in the open division goes to entry number five, the Shrine Maiden. Thank you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, one more round of applause for everyone. Nick the Dudley, Nick the Pet Crew, Steve Power Giraffe. Thank you everyone for donating prizes. Thank the Tech Crew, thank the ushers, thank everyone who's been there. Go out and have a good time, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Good night, everybody.